Hello everyone and welcome back. AMC stock is green today, at least a little. I'd rather be green than red today being red today is terrible even a little red today is too much people don't want to see red today, not following Fed what's interesting is that everyone said Powell made a big change at the last Fed meeting. Not the one that just happened, but the one before that. It may have been two years ago when Powell first started talking about cutting RS next, but I think this was the real change with Powell. This was the meeting where I realized it doesn't matter what happens with inflation, the Fed has successfully defeated it. I think he and all Fed officials are starting to feel the pressure, and as the election date approaches, it looks like we'll be seeing a lot of rate cuts. It doesn't matter what happens with the recent bout of inflation. The Fed could cut less, but they're going to cut anyway. Powell made it very clear to me that if you watch the press conference, Powell is waiting for any reason he can find to start really cutting rates. He said, and I'll paraphrase, that we probably won't go back to those really low interest rates from the COVID era for a long time. But he also said that there's a lot of uncertainty around that. For example, the Fed's dot plot shows that GDP is going to be amazing, or at least trending that way. We won't be in a low growth environment for years, but Powell says anything can happen. I'm not sure, but anything could make Powell start really cutting rates now. Let's look at some of the data we had today and give you an idea of what we'll be looking at tomorrow. We'll also go over all the specific data and information you need to know about AMC Stack. First, the data from today shows that initial jobless claims were 210,000 lower than the estimate of 215,000. Powell is still not seeing a reason to cut that line. The Philadelphia Fed Manufacturing Index came in at 3.2 when most people thought it would be dash 2.3. That was a lot better than what was predicted. B, this month's Philly Fed Business Condition Score was only 7.2, while this month's score was 3.8.6. We didn't have an estimate. Philly Fed CapEx came in at 2.3.6 last month and was 1.2.7 this month. This means that both people and businesses are spending more money. Philly Fed jobs were below average. 9.6 was a little better than last month's number of dash 10.3. It was good news that Philly Fed new orders were up, 5.4. And it was bad last month, 5.2 now. Here's something that might be why I think the markets are doing so well today. Philadelphia Fed prices paid came in at 3.70 last month, while they were 16.6 this month. That's crazy. These also helped the actual SP Global Composite PMI flash score was 5.2.2, while the prediction was 5.1.5. This is a bit higher than the top number. Better than the top number of 52, the SP Global Manufacturing PMI came in at 5.2.5, and the SP Global Services PMI came in at 5.1.7. The expected number was 52, so prices paid for the Philadelphia Fed fell, and the SP Global Services PMI fell even more than expected. That's great news. The number of sales of existing homes was 4.38 million, which was higher than expected. This is good news, and the number of sales from one month to the next was 99.5. Although I'm not sure if that's great news for the Fed, we haven't seen much activity in real estate lately, and rent prices are still high. If things start to move faster, it might be good for housing inflation, but we'll have to wait and see. Fed Barr spoke at noon. He's usually the guy who talks about banking policies, but since he's in charge of the Fed's banking division and doesn't talk much about it, we didn't get any quotes there. Tonight, you'll get the inflation rate from Japan, which could be important to keep an eye on but isn't usually a big deal. Now, I think the big story here and after hours will be Nike's earnings. Lululemon and FedEx are customer staple companies. I don't mean that you have to buy things from these companies, but they're great companies. Bell Weathers for the consumer FedEx Lulu and Nike consumer-oriented names if they have better earnings that's going to be a big problem for potentially just how strong the consumer is doing. And I'm sure that's something the Fed will be looking at specifically with FedEx if FedEx says consumer. Slowing down, you know people are not buying as many things. We're just not seeing as, as much business that's not going to be, um, that's, that's not going to be fantastic, okay? That's, that's not going to be a great thing. So definitely these earnings today and after hours are one uh, to be watching a little bit more uh, closely, especially Lululemon, because they're really a higher, higher uh, dollar amount uh, product um, in and of itself, so you want to see how the consumer is doing. Look at Lulu now. Now a lot of females, um, they spend they're going to spend on Lulu. So I'm really not too worried about um, their earnings at all. Nike, they've been in a little bit more of a problematic situation. Asian, so I would say expectations are low for Nike, high for Lulu, and uh, pretty low for FedEx. So FedEx doesn't beat those low expectations. Yet definitely going to have a bit of bit of a problem there. Now as far as tomorrow's economic calendar, we do have retail. 
sales coming out month over month from the UK at about 3 in the morning. Um, tonight technically tomorrow morning, but that could move things not really expecting it to, and then you have Fed Bar again at noon tomorrow, and then you do have Fed Bostic at 400 p.m. Now, what is he going to say on Friday at 4 p.m.? Probably won't move the markets, but it's possible and something to think about. As of right now, I can't find any company-specific news about AMC. However, the company's price goes up and down a lot. There is also the Reddit IPO, which is getting a lot of attention. It's not my type of company to invest in, but some people are looking at trading it. Yeah, that's what happens when AMC is red, you get tired and yawn when nothing is going on. AMC stock hasn't been doing much for a while now, so for it to be red, or even slightly green but still red, that's crazy, right? I mean, look at the markets. The Russell is up 1.3, the NASDAQ is up 0.62%, the SP is up 0.54%, and the Dow is up 0.82%. It's crazy that bond yields and treasury yields are going up. 10-year treasury yields are going up about one basis point, which you may have seen on the dot plot. That's because the Fed just raised its predictions for the Fed funds rate by the end of 2025 and 2026, which makes sense since longer-term interest rates are going to be higher. If you look at this longer run category of the dot plot, it went from, I don't know what brings this market down to be honest, you'll need to see the economy get worse or something to really bring this market down. You might have a few small corrections. 3% pullbacks are possible, but 10% pullbacks are probably not. Now let's look at the data for AMC. We see that there is one 4.01% short interest of free float, and that number keeps going up every day. There are currently one $6.14 million worth of short positions in AMC stock, which needs to be covered in 2.536.748,373 days. These kids are really wearing me out. There are three $6.7 million shares that have been sold short and 52 million shares that are currently out on loan. The cost to borrow is 1.08%, and the utilization rate is 69.64%. The short score is 69.34% out of 100. There are also cost bar fees of about 8.18%, so even though the data isn't changing all that much, it is moving in the right direction. It's moving in the direction that you guys want to see higher short interest and a more fluid overall setup, which is what we're working towards with AMC. With that in mind, let's look at the option activity today volume on the call side was 64.45%, and volume on the put side was 35.55%, for a ratio of about 2 1. That's also working against AMC prices so keep that in mind. Sentiment is balanced today at 50, but yesterday it was very positive at 76. Message volume today is 60, but yesterday it was 52, and the participation rate today is 55, so we're seeing some pretty good numbers here. The mood is obviously a little lower today because AMC stock is in the red, but the markets as a whole are doing very well. If you look at the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average, you can see that 61.1% of stocks are above their 50-day moving average, which means that 2.75% of stocks are now breaking above their 50-day moving average, which is a pretty good number that shows a 5% jump today. Definitely taking a step in the right direction, but I do think with this pivot from Powell that we got yesterday, you're probably going to see a lot more upside from here. I mean, again, it looks clear we're going to get cuts. No matter what, um, the Fed is really not worried about this recent round of. Inflation, the economy is doing well. I mean, in, in the worst case scenario, if the economy does start to turn down, the Fed's going to cut rates very quickly, right, very, very quickly, and come in and support the markets in any which way the markets need. So I, again, I just really don't see the catalyst for markets to fall from here, obviously. Those are like famous last words, because you know we could have a catalyst come out tomorrow, we could have bad news come out right now, who knows, but uh, as far as right now, I just don't see it, I don't see it, I don't see anything, unless earnings were to really come in bad or something, which doesn't look likely as kind of an aggregate, then you're probably not going to be falling from here now. What does that mean for AMC? The liquidity situation is now over, and there will never be a liquidity crunch again. That's not even a choice. If the Fed is, is really um, supporting the markets and you know doing whatever they need to support the markets, you're just not going to get a liquidity crunch. Liquidity will stay abundant and stocks will stay higher. Now, I think that's also a good thing for AMC when the markets deem you should buy. Interest rate sensitive stocks. Now, if you look at Sofa, you look at Fubo, you look at Tesla, you look at some other interest rate sensitive names, a lot of those stocks are still not doing that well today. So it's not like we're getting some kind of huge, crazy, broad based, exciting rally. Um, with your interest rate sensitive names, that's not exactly the case. Not everything is doing well today, but most things are AMC stock is now down. Almost 1% markets are slipping a little bit here. 
as we are recording this video kind of slipping downwards, but really. I mean, you, you've got a gap up and you're probably going to hold that gap up throughout the rest of the day today. If we don't, then you have a larger problem on your hands, but we'll see press the like button. Sign up for the channel, please let me know what you think about this. As always, the comments are below. If you're a bull, you want to get above that 50-day moving average, which is currently at $437 per share or $3.037 per share or $0.37 per share. If you're a bear, you don't want that to happen. And if you really start to get under $420 per share, that's where you could see an even bigger drop, maybe even to new all-time lows. It all depends on what Adam Aon does if that happens, if we get a promise not to lose shareholders. As always, the comments are below. For those of you who haven't already, please click the like button and subscribe button. Have a great rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next video.